Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am here on this bright, sunshiny, summery day for a little ocean project. An ocean seashell. So this guy has all the ocean waves that you want. I'm going to fall on that someday. Trap in a little ocean seashell package. It's actually really easy. You don't need much resin. And even if you're a beginner, you can do this. So what you need is obviously a shell. You need a scallop shell. It can be one of these or a larger one. I have some that are like four or five inches that I cannot wait to play with. You need resin. You need white colorant, preferably alcohol ink. Then you need a light teal, a dark teal, and a navy. Those can be craft paints. And then you need some shells, okay? You also, well, you don't need sand, but y'all, the sand looks awesome. So get some sand and you're ready to go. We need a heat gun, we need a respirator, we need our safety disposable gloves, and we will be resining in no time. Let's get started. All right, y'all, voiceover Betsy here, and we are gonna jump right in. So first things first, grab something like a stack of post-it notes that you don't mind getting resin on. This has a clear cellophane wrapper still, and use it to level out your shell. Then you can start to put sand in the middle, and you want that sand to be flat across the top. It doesn't need to go all the way up your shell, but you want it to leave just about a centimeter of space at the top. So that little stack of post-it notes will just help keep everything level for when you're pouring your resin. You can use your finger or a popsicle stick to kind of push the sand down, but you just want it to kind of be level across the top here. Then we'll start to arrange our shells. So the first piece you're going to put down is your biggest. In my case, that's this piece of white coral. I really liked how it looked on the right. It kind of fit naturally there. And then I added some smaller shells. There's no right or wrong way. You can add more than three. You can add one. You can add however many shells you desire. Just make them look good. Now let's mix our resin. You're going to need a dark teal, the light teal, the navy, and the white, and you'll mix all of those. Glove up, put on your respirator, and let's get started with the navy. So we're going to add the resin right to the area where the sand and the shell meet. And you want to add a good, like, I don't know, half a centimeter thick of resin. You can eyeball it. You know how waves look. So we're going to add the darkest color farthest away from the beach since ocean gets darker the further out you go. You can use your popsicle stick to touch the sand a little bit, but you don't want to pick up sand necessarily. So it's best if you kind of drop it in place as opposed to try and pat it into place. Unfortunately, the resin does sometimes want to kind of congregate in the shallowest areas. That's why the sand really helps level things out. All right, once you've got the navy down, we'll go ahead and come in with the dark teal, and we're just gonna put that right where the navy and the sand meet. It's gonna roll down towards the navy, that's okay. Just keep putting it on. Be careful how you're putting it on because this is where I start to get a little um, uncoordinated and I drop some and the portion of white sand I just ended up leaving it, but you can use a popsicle stick to kind of remove that sand if you want. I kind of wish I had done that because I would have rather had pristine white sand. There it is right there. It doesn't look bad, but it would have looked better if it had stayed white. Now let's add the light teal, same concept. You're just going to add it to the bottom portion. You'll see how the resin's definitely rolling down towards the bottom of the shell. Now add your clear, start by adding it over the shells because you really want those shells to be firmly glued into place and adding the resin over top of them is what's going to do that. Then you're going to just fill up your sand area with the clear resin. It's going to start pushing the color back and this will actually form some cells and pretty foam with just the colored resin, which is fun. 
let that sit a minute and then come back in and add a bit more resin, the clear resin to the top and that will force those darker colors down a little bit and then further in towards the beach. You don't necessarily want them to be so thin. Now take your heat gun and just quickly pass it over. We're not trying to move the resin, we just wanna pop the bubbles. Now here's technique one, which is right when the resin is still wet, you can come in with your white, add a little bit, and then hit it with your heat gun. This is how you make the foamy waves. You just wanna hit it a little bit until the resin starts to separate and then leave it be. And when you leave it be, it will separate out and form those pretty cells. I do two shells on this video. So for this first one, I'm going to go ahead and add a second layer of the white right over the colored resin and then hit it with my heat gun. You'll see later on that this gives you kind of a foamier look to your waves. It's very, there you go, it's very kind of messy. So for the second shell, I'm going to go ahead and flood the beach. We're adding the clear the same exact way that we added the clear for the first shell. And we're going to add it on the top. We're doing everything identical to the first shell up to this point. The difference is going to be we're going to go ahead and wait to do the waves. So we're going to let both shells cure for at least three to five hours and then we'll come back and do the waves in a second layer so that they're more defined and less mixed in with the other colors all right one more little shell this is going to have more of a beach area on the shell on the right so i added an extra little shell and now we are going to leave these for about three hours and they will cure See? Beautiful. Shake up your white. We're going to mix some more resin. Since we're only doing waves, we only need to mix white and clear this time. I mixed about 20 milliliters of white and probably about 30 milliliters of clear. And honestly, I didn't need so much white. It's just so much fun to play with, though. All right, now we've got our white, we've got our clear, and we are going to go ahead and get started. So pop the bubbles in the cups as much as possible. You don't want to heat up your shells more than you have to. Then we're going to go ahead and pick up our clear, and we're going to pour half on each shell. So that's about 15 milliliters per shell. And you just want to kind of pour it on and then spread it out until it's over the entire uh, ocean area, I suppose. You don't necessarily need to get the shells for this part, but any of the flat area you want to get. Pouring it works pretty well, but you can actually come back with your popsicle stick or with your gloved hand either way, except then you'll have to take off your glove. I find a popsicle stick works good but just take that popsicle stick and you're gonna spread out the resin so that it's in all the little nooks and crannies, all the corners, all the pieces, and you have an even coat across the tops of both flat surfaces. There we go, push it into all the shells. Make sure it's kind of curved around the top. Beautiful. Do the other one. The resin will pretty much settle out properly. We're just guiding it. Looks like this one is not as level as I'd like. So just make sure that they are staying level. <laughs> just because we put them level doesn't mean they'll stay. There we go. That's better. 
All right, go ahead and pop any bubbles that might have arisen from the pouring. Just quick passes over the top. Perfect. And now we're going to come in with the white. So for this one, we'll do the first layer or the first wave right where the sand and the ocean meet. And then we'll come back and do the second layer after we've created some foam. All right, so just hit that white until it starts to separate. There we go, and then leave it alone. That's the hardest part. You just wanna keep working with it. All right. Oh, see those cells starting to form. That is so pretty. I swear, you guys, I am obsessed with this. All right, once it's set out a little bit, you can come back and play with it a little more. But really, the more you leave it alone, the better. At this point, I'm just trying to move the entire wave backwards so that I have room to create another one up front. There we go. What I should have done was only hit it with the heat gun once and then left well enough alone. Learn from me. You always can see your mistakes in video form better than in real life. Right. There we go. All right, I'm just trying to separate some of those waves now. So I'm going to come in with a little clear, just put it in between. Perfect. And now we're going to do the second shell. Go ahead and put our white resin down and hit it with the heat gun. much better. Okay, now go ahead and come back in with a second wave. I learned a little bit here. And same thing. You guys are going to be wave pros by the end of this video. I know I was. Well, well enough anyways. Beautiful. I'm just going to come back and add a little bit more what white to find waves to this first one since I spread it out with my heat gun so much. There we go. Alright y'all, now you just want to leave these to cure overnight. You really only need to leave them for about 5 or 6 hours, but overnight is the best and then they'll be ready to go. Alright y'all, how quick and easy was that? I don't know which is my favorite part, putting the shells on the piece or watching the waves come to life. I think this is my favorite way to ever use a heat gun is to make ocean waves. So, if you haven't made one yet, 
stop watching this video, go get some resin, make some waves, y'all. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.